from traditional healers. There's one shot which sells paracetamol or aspirin, and apart from that, they go to the nearest dispensary if they're ill, which is about an hour and a half's walk. Let's see where, where the last member of the team who I've forgotten is, Shamim. <laughs> Hi, Shamim and Joe. Oh, they're very pleased. She, she's much more entertaining than I am. <laughs> All the children used to say hello, Carolina. Now they say hello, Shamim. <laughs> Hi, right, we're ready to go now. Malaria is rampant throughout sub-Saharan Africa. In the villages that Caroline visits, nearly all of the children she sees will be infected with the malaria parasite. One reason for malaria's resurgence is that it has become resistant to the two standard treatments. In much of Africa, chloroquine, the most widely used drug, now fails two-thirds of the time, and SP, the second drug of choice, is nearly as ineffectual. It's extremely disturbing. Two weeks ago, there were two cases of children in two separate villages who were so ill when, when we got there to do the survey that one of them died before even getting in the car. And the other one, they brought the child down to the hospital, but the child died before being admitted. It just seems quite extraordinary that malaria treatments are available but they're too expensive, the good malaria treatments are too expensive for anyone in the villages to afford or for the Tanzanian government to afford and so the children carry on getting treated with something which really is ineffective and worse than that probably delays them being taken to hospital to get something which is effective and it just doesn't seem reasonable that that's possible really uh, in this day and age. Sheeta has heard that Caroline and her team are visiting the village and she's anxious that baby Joseph is seen. First, she must wait her turn. Caroline asks each mother when their child last had a fever and what drug they were given to treat it. In most cases, the child is still ill despite the previous treatment. Joseph Simon. Joseph must be weighed and measured. The clinician feels his spleen, which has become inflamed by the malaria parasites, and finally takes his temperature. The diagnosis is as feared, malaria, and the treatment, an inadequate drug. Without an effective cure, the only option is to try to prevent the mosquito from biting and infecting the children. This can be done with mosquito nets. Research shows that insecticide-treated bed nets can reduce infant death from malaria by 20%, but they're a preventative measure and not a cure. If a child does end up contracting malaria, then the problem is that there's, there's no effective treatment close by so that there's a chance that the child may die or else that the child may be disabled if it gets cerebral malaria. <laughs> I think it's completely unacceptable that children are still getting terribly sick and dying from malaria because essentially this disease is treatable 
And if the treatments were made available and affordable to the people who live in the malarious areas, then millions of lives would be saved. We desperately need new anti-malarial drugs that are both affordable and effective. But normally developing drugs that are modern and scientific is both very expensive, in fact it can cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and it's technically very difficult indeed. In fact, uh, one of the things that very often surprises people is that fewer countries have discovered, developed and registered to an international standard drugs than have developed atomic bombs. Maybe this says something about the world's priorities. Well, it is true that it's very expensive and most research fails, but I think it would be wrong to be overly pessimistic. Uh, over the last few years, there's been a resurgence of research in malaria and malaria drugs, and one place where something that's particularly exciting is happening is, is here in Delhi. Chris is on his way to see India's largest pharmaceutical company, Ran Baxi, which started out making drugs developed by others. Now they're working on a new anti-malarial brought to them by Chris and the Medicines for Malaria venture. If all goes to plan, it will deliver a cure affordable to even the poorest people back in Africa.